Stimtak is a mutual pleasure, and both the husband and the wife are entitled to that. And I mentioned that traditionally in Sharia, it's considered a man's right at any time, and and the reasons for that have to do with men being more prone to being overcome by their appetite. The Prophet ﷺ said that that a woman actually has more appetite than a man, but the modesty is so intense in a woman that it protects her, whereas the man doesn't have the, the haya component as strong in him, and so it can become more dangerous uh, for him. And so that that's why. And then a woman, generally, it's once every four days. And if that is not fulfilled, then it can become grounds uh, for a divorce. I mentioned also, I think, that if a woman complains to a judge about lack of such sexual intimacy, then he, he can command the man, the man to sleep with his wife. And this is not considered, Ibn Arabi anhu said, it is not lack of modesty that a woman makes that demand. It sh- should not be considered because it's praiseworthy for her to want to protect her virtue and that that is a right. And so it's one of the maqasid or the goals of marriage and for that reason that she is not uh, to be seen as an impious or uh, immodest woman if she's demanding that right, if she's being neglected there. And just in terms of etiquette, uh, the etiquette of the the bedroom, the Prophet wasallam. He said, don't go to women like a camel goes to a she-camel. And then he also said, send a messenger, which is what is termed in modern jargon, is called foreplay. And they asked him what that was. And he said, uh, kissing and sweet words. So that was part of his teaching was that women should be, should be treated in that way. And Ibn Abbas anhu said that he liked to adorn himself I like to become ornamented for my wife in the same way I like her to do that for me, which means wearing perfume, cleaning the mouth, taking care of oneself. All of those are uh, important and they're the sunnah of both men and women. And then they should wear good clothes. They should take care of their hygiene which includes cutting nails, keeping them clean for a woman, things like braiding her hair, using henna, hair coloring, removal of body hair, and then for both man and woman, obviously removal of the underarm and of the pubic hair on a regular basis. And according to the sunnah, it should be done at least every 40 days. People are different on that, but it's, it's, it's a sunnah, and it's a neglected sunnah by some people, but uh, Muslims should do that. And then disrobing, it's actually encouraged to disrobe, and, you know, there's some other traditions where they actually, in the Orthodox tradition and some other religions, the woman's, the, you know, there's supposed to be a sheet and with a hole in it and things like that. and I mean, Muslims don't have any of that. That's another religion, so there, there's nothing wrong with that. And then Aisha anhu said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he used to suck my tongue, and that's related in a sound hadith. And actually, in traditional Chinese medicine, it's considered um, an, an actual a healthful thing to do. Uh, for the the two partners to actually, uh, there's an exchange of fluid, and 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 it's uh, it's considered to be a beneficial thing. And then it's encouraged before that act that they pray two rakah and seek refuge from shaitan. Allahumma jannibna shaitan wa jannib shaitan ma razaqtana. You know, keep us away from shaitan and keep shaitan away from what you have provided for us and then no harm will come to any offspring if it happens to occur. And then uh, also, especially for newlyweds, a man has to be sensitive to a wife's natural modesty and shyness and take time because usually it's, these are new things. And I think one of the problems with the modern age is because of films, people have seen things that in normal societies, healthy societies none of those would be issues whereas in 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 modern society people have already seen more than they should and i mean one of the things that my 10 year old was at a 
library and he came up to me and he said that there was some little girl over that was really bothering him. She kept staring at him. And he didn't understand it at all. He was just kind of in a... And, and the thing about it is, is that traditionally little girls didn't, you know, they didn't do things like that uh, until they got into puberty and, and older. And even then, it, most girls would be too shy uh, and modest, whereas now there's, the whole culture is teaching them to be immodest to do things like that. So these are really bad signs for a culture or a society. And then in, in terms of pleasure, the entire body of both the male and the female is permissible to drive pleasure from and give pleasure to with the exception of the rectal area. It's the provostalized and prohibited uh, anal intercourse. And so that's, that's something that, and he actually said some strong things about that just about what type of people do that and things like that so the next right is mutual inheritance so shared rights the right of inheritance between the spouses uh, based on Quranic portions Allah says and you will inherit half of your wife's share if she leave no child and if they leave a child then to you the fourth of that which they leave after payment of legacies they may have bequeathed or debt and to them belongs a fourth of that which you leave if, if you have no child, and if you have a child, then the eighth of that which you leave after any legacy. And part of the reason for the disparity is that when children are there, the children have a legal responsibility to, to take care of the mother. So it's important that the male, in all the inheritance laws, the understanding has never been that a man gets more because he's better or something like that. Nobody has ever said that in the history of Islam. It's actually seen purely in economical terms. A, a man's responsibility is more than a woman's. And there are a few situations in inheritance laws where women will get more than the male uh, relatives. But generally, the, the, the male will get more. So, and the point is always understood to be that the, the obligations are greater upon the man to other people, whereas a woman her wealth is discretionary.